judiciary resulted in the arrest and imprisonment of up 20, up 20 Bolivian officials, including Fernando Rivera, a primary representative of the Ministry of Government and the prosecution of the draw striker. What had been exposed was an unprecedented ring of extortion. Indeed, Mr. Ostreicher's only crime was to have brought a successful rice concession and well-paying jobs to poor Bolivians. But the criminal actions of the judiciary, the rice and heavy, heavy equipment was commandeered and sold for personal profit and jobs to poor Bolivians evaporated. While the principal investor in Mr. Ostreicher's business venture, Swiss businessman Andre Volti, Zolti, was determined to be conducting legitimate and transparent business practices through an investigation by Interpol, and while Mr. Ostreicher has been able to account for every penny, demonstrate that all funds have legally and with full transparency been channeled to the Bolivian Central Bank, and that all funds have subsequently been invested legally and with the same transparency, it was Mr. Ostreicher who was carted off to prison in Santa Cruz called Palmasola. <coughs> Palmasola prison is described as the modern day Dante's Inferno. 4,500 inmates that they themselves run, the corrections officers are limited to perimeter control and roll checks. Uh, it's a prison that receives delivery of body bags to the front gate on a weekly basis and feeds its prisoners 18 cents worth of mulchy brush twice, twice daily to the trough. Disease, violence, and humiliation. In this prison, the Strauss striker lost 55 pounds a full third of his body weight, and suffered the onset of Parkinson's disease and was subject to tremendous physical violence by guards and fellow inmates. In addition to enabling the arrests of the Red Extortion Network prison, Morales also ordered an emergency medical examination from Mr. Ostrak. I flew to Santa Cruz, where I met with Minister of Government, Carlos Romero, and his Vice Minister, Jorge Perez, with the support of President Morales and the assistance of Mr. Ostrak with Bolivian attorneys, Mr. Romero and Vice Minister Paris were able to ex expedite the doctor's examination. We went to Palmasola at 1 a.m. that same night and stood witness as the Bolivian state appointed doctor made the determination that Mr. Ostreicher was at life risk and signed papers ordering that he be transported to a private medical clinic for immediate and continuing treatment. <clears throat> On my third visit to La Paz in December 2012, I was scheduled to meet with President Morales and Vice President Venera in advance of Jacob's hearing the following day. At the diplomatic home of Venezuelan ambassador to Bolivia, Chris Gonzalez, we were informed that the meeting would no longer be necessary, as Mr. Ostreicher's hearing in Santa Cruz the following morning was assumed to be that which would secure his release and exoneration. We were flown by military transport that evening to Santa Cruz. The following morning at the courthouse, we were brought to a waiting room where, despite our optimism, Mr. Ostreicher, who was then in a minimally improved physical state, wearing the required body armor that acknowledged the Bolivian state's own concern for his safety in light of the criminal elements within their own condition. Constrained by his own disability to a wheelchair with hands shaking from Parkinson's disease, nonetheless had clarity of mind that our optimism was stolen from us. As we prepared for the arrival of the judge and the hearing to take place, I imparted to him based on what I had been told of the cause, that he would very soon be seeing his wife, his five children, and his 11 grandchildren, from whom he'd been significantly parted for two years. He said to me, it won't happen, Sean. These expletives want to kill me. I'm too dangerous to them as a witness. At that point, we were notified that the judge would soon enter the court, and, assist, and I assisted Mr. Ostreicher in his wheelchair into the courtroom. As an actor, I've been in good movies, and I've been in bad movies. I've never seen a worse movie, or more arch villainy, on such a caricaturish and humanly diabolical level as I witnessed in that court. Despite the clear, unequivocal arguments of innocence, and more importantly, evidence of innocence brought by Mr. Ostreicher's Bolivian defense team, the judge, under the clear intimidation of a panel of snickering, arrogant, and hateful prosecutors, would have none of either logic nor law. With Mr. Ostreicher still too frail to be touched without tremendous pain through his bone contact with his thin, paper thin skin, and the Parkinson's mixed with a heightened stress anxiety creating intense shaking, the prosecution dared even to challenge the Bolivian state doctor's medical diagnosis and claim that Mr. Ostreicher was perfectly healthy 
and pushed for him to be returned to the death factory of Palmasola prison. What followed was a very challenging negotiation to keep Mr. Ostreicher in the clinic so as to keep him from being returned to Palmasola prison, and where we stand today through the diligent work of both his Bolivian and American attorneys and the dedicated support of this committee and of Governor Bill Richardson, and indeed the cautious support of President Morales and his Venezuelan counterparts. Mr. Ostreicher is remanded to house arrest. While his weight and mobility have returned to something close to normal, the Parkinson's quite likely triggered by the stress and his time he called the soul of prison remains a debilitating concern, and he is in daily fear for his life, further exacerbating his Parkinson's. It's high time Mr. Ostreicher's elderly parents, wife, children, and grandchildren receive him back in the United States to move on with their lives. This tragic scenario is not Bolivian. It's not the Bolivian people. It's not the Bolivian president. What it is is an example of the continuum of Bolivia's hundred years of struggle in its fight for human rights and its revolution for freedom. In that revolution, Bolivians have demonstrated an extraordinary courage and will for sacrifice. It is on that basis and in solidarity with President Morales and the Bolivian people that I offer the following. Last week, registration opened for the Dakar rally. As the off-road driving enthusiasts know, among us know, that the, uh, the Dakar rally is one of the premier rally made across country driving competitions in the world. It started more than 30 years ago as a race from Paris, France, along the Sahara to the desert of Dakar, Senegal. Each year, the Dakar rally brings together hundreds of competitors in the motorcycle, car, and truck classes to compete in a two-week race covering thousands of miles of the world's roughest terrain. For host countries, the Dakar rally brings hundreds of thousands of dollars in charitable donations, millions of spectators and tourists, hundreds of millions of dollars in economic activity, and billions of viewers from 190 countries to global broadcasting. While the net impact of the rally is at times controversial, many have shared sentiments that, like the government of Peru, which declared the rally a national interest, and the Argentine Minister of Tourism, who called the rally the biggest promotional tool for tourism in Argentina's history. For the past four years, the Dakar rally has been racing through South America, and in January of 2014, for the first time ever, part of the race is scheduled to traverse southern Bolivia making Bolivia the 28th host, in, uh, host country in the rally's history. In fact, just last month, rally organizers competed in a dress rehearsal again across Bolivia's famous salt flats. The Dakar rally, one of the world's most prominent displays of freedom and tenacity of the human spirit, will be paraded through Bolivia, even as thousands of prisoners like the straw striker sit in feces-filled cells, forgotten behind locked walls, and surrounded by the sort of inhuman savagery we only dream is possible in existential nightmares. The Dakar rally is scheduled to celebrate the triumphs of the human spirit and innovation on the same soil where the Bolivian justice system festers and loots the same from its innocent and uncharged victims. The Economist has reported that at least two-thirds of the prison population in Bolivia is on remand, awaiting trial, awaiting trial. So I ask you, distinguished members of this committee, Join me in calling on the sponsors of the Dakar rally to bring their influence to bear for the thousands of innocent victims of the Bolivian justice system, and especially for Jacob Ostreicher. Starting with the official partner of the Dakar rally, the petrochemical giant Total, or Total, and then moving to each of the official partners, Michelin, Honda, Mitsubishi Motors, Red Bull, Edox, Karcher, Agreco, and even the official race photographer, Mandrew Bowden. I ask that you influence to call on these sponsors to insist that their support for the Dakar rally will either require Mr. Ostreicher is finally free to return to the United States, and as Mr. Nedler mentioned, uh, the 18 months allowed by the Bolivian Constitution to be held without charge have, always, have already, already passed, and so there should be no discussion that could give opening to too late offers of an expedited trial. Free as a first sign of goodwill and the intention on the part of the Bolivian government and the ethical within its judicial institutions as they continue the long and difficult process of justice and reform, or the Dakar rally will not be
I am confident that the good people in these companies do not want to support the perpetual imprisonment of innocents and will recognize the necessity of principled withdrawal should the government of Bolivia fail to act. But they should do this for practical reasons too. Imagine the tragedy if one of their own people or one of the tourists following the rally while Padalek passes through Bolivia were to become victims like Jacob and land behind, behind bars without charges, without evidence against them, and without rights. As 2014 will be the first time the rally ventures into Bolivia, this first test run will, will only consist of one stage of the motor class, motorcycle class venturing across the Bolivian salt flat. This is to say that if the Bolivian justice system continues to deny Mr. Ostrucker the freedom that they themselves have indicated he is due, since they have not brought any legitimate charges against him, it is still possible for the Dakar rally to exclude Bolivia. The international pressure could very well be precisely what the president of Bolivia needs to be able to finally expel the malignant, the malignant cancer of corruption that is killing both the Bolivian justice system and the thousands of innocent people like Mr. Ostrom. But putting a clear cost to the continued abuse of the justice system on the economic elites of the country may well be giving President Morales and the people of Bolivia the leverage needed to advance their heroic fight for freedom and justice in Bolivia to the next level. So again, I ask that you all join me in calling on the sponsors of the Dakar Rally, Total, Michelin, Honda, Mitsubishi Motors, Red Bull, Edox, Karcher, Agreco, and Major Photo to demand Jacob's freedom as a condition of their support for the Dakar Rally in Bolivia.